Welcome to the new YouTube channel. If you haven't already done it, hit the subscribe button to follow us all season long for updates and content. So happy that you're here. It's going to be a great year. This freight train in Baltimore just keeps on chugging along. I, the, if there's any doubt who the best team in football is right now, I don't think you have to look very far because it, it's Baltimore. And I know you love the San Francisco 49ers, and rightfully so. I mean, they are a juggernaut in their own right. But what Baltimore did to them last week and what they did to Miami this week, it's hard to overlook this team anymore. Richard, your thoughts on the Baltimore Ravens winning 56 to 19 over the Miami Dolphins? I mean, Mitchell, they put a whooping on the Miami Dolphins, and it was close, eh, close ish early on. Uh, there were a few mishaps by the Miami Dolphins. I think Tyreek dropped the touchdown pass that ended up being a field goal. But from that point forward, the Baltimore Ravens put their foot on their necks and their foot on the gas, and they pulled away. Uh, Lamar Jackson had 255 in the first half. He ended up with 321, 18 of 21, only had three incompletions, had more touchdown passes than incompletions in the game. A perfect 158.3 passer rating. He ran the ball six times for 38 yards. Gus Edwards had his fair share of rushes, 16 for 68 yards and a touchdown. Zay Flowers with his first 100-yard receiving game in the National Football League, and it almost all came on one play, a long touchdown pass right. from a dime, pretty pass from Lamar Jackson. Uh, Kyle Van Oy with a sack in the game, a career-high eight sacks for him. They picked him up off the streets midseason. <laughs> Mitchell, and he has been a revelation for them in this pass rush. Another guy who's been incredible for them um, has been Roquan Smith, who had an interception. Geno Stone with another interception. Isaiah Likely only had two catches, but one of them was a beautiful catch on a fourth down pass, a one-handed pass that he takes for a touchdown that really started to break the game open. Um, they look like the, the class of the AFC and the class of the league right now. Uh, on their way to the, obviously the number one seed. We'll see how the playoffs go, but I, it, it, they're going to be a tough team to beat. They're going to be a tough out. Uh, Miami Dolphins, who were, were kind of flying and getting a lot of respect, uh, stumbled a lot this game. Tua Tunga Vailoa, two interceptions, the two touchdown passes. Uh, Devin Achain, uh had 14 catches, I mean, 14 rushes for 107, four receptions for 30 yards. But Tyreek Hill, only six catches for 76 yards. He was on that pace, still doesn't look 100%. So unlikely to get the awards that he was in line to, to be chasing. Uh, Bradley Chubb looked like he may have torn his ACL, which you hate to see. Um, so, yeah, without Waddle and without Mostert, obviously, I don't even know if those guys played, if they would have made much of a difference. This team is just rolling. They're They're running the ball well. They're throwing the ball well. Um, defensively, they're putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback from a lot of different places. Uh, and so Mitchell, you got to get, you got to give them all the credit in the world. You put up. Well, unlike points. the Philadelphia Eagles, man, this team, this Baltimore right. Ravens team is the furthest thing from predictable. I mean, they can do it all. They're aggressive as all get out defensively, offensively. I mean, they are beyond elite. They can hit you from all cylinders. Everyone thought when Mark Andrews went out, this team was going to slide a little bit. Isaiah likely coming out of nowhere, a coastal Carolina prospect, just doing his thing, looking, looking like a very, very good rising star in this league at this point. But Richard, I'm here to ask the tough questions. You know, you know, that's why I'm here, Rich. And that's what and I hope you're here been, for, Mitchell. You know, you have not been on this Lamar Jackson MVP hype train over the last couple of weeks. You've been a, a proponent against it, if you will. And, and Richard, I, I I got to ask, what does this guy got to do to prove to you that he's a worthy, you know, recipient of an MVP award? Well, Mitchell, he had five touchdown passes in the game, and that's what we needed to see all season. We need to see a lot more touchdown passes. He had more touchdown passes in this game, Mitchell, than he had the whole month of September and the whole month of November and all the games <laughs> he played in seven games. Those seven games, Mitchell, he had six touchdown passes. And in this game alone, he had five. And so, that's what we 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 needed to see more of. That's the only argument against his MVP case is that the touchdown numbers aren't there. He this game he showed both with his legs, with his arms. He's executing from the pocket. He got the yardage. 
But again, Mitchell, that's 24 touchdown passes now on the season. And it just hasn't happened in a very long time. I think a couple of years ago, you know, they keep bringing up some Peyton Manning stat where he had 28, where he got it over Brady that year um, with only 28 touchdown passes. But that was 15 years ago. Now, of the last five MVPs, nobody has had less than Lamar's 35. And uh, Aaron had 38. Last year, Mahomes had 41 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. And so everybody was brought, bringing up the, the clip where I was like, man, you know, Hertz, Hertz is doing a lot for his team and he deserves it. He deserves a shot at it. And they're like, look, you said something about Hertz. And I was like, yeah. And then Mahomes <laughs> got it with 41 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. So that's that's the thing. The numbers had to be there. They were not there for Jalen Hurts, regardless of the seeding or whatever what the case may be. He didn't have the numbers in terms of touchdown passes. They had the number one record in the NFC, but he did not have the touchdown pass numbers. Mahomes did, and that's why Mahomes got the award. And so people were like, you're hating, you're hating. I'm just going off what the way they described this award and the way they picked this award for the past five, six years. And it's been the guy with the most touchdown passes. Well, not the most touchdown passes, but you got to have at least over 30. And you cannot show me a situation outside of 15 years ago where they gave it to uh to Peyton, where a guy's getting it with less than 30 touchdown passes in his day and age. But this could be a new day and age. This could be the 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 one that changes right. it all because he is the heavy betting favorite right now. And they'll probably give it to him because you, you talk about Tyreek Hill, who had a chance at it, kind of falling off the map. He didn't play one of the games. And then the other two, he had under 100 yards. Christian McCaffrey didn't finish this last game for the San Francisco 49ers. So his production dropped off, even though he got a touchdown. He's still one touchdown away from tying Jerry Rice's uh, franchise record of 23 touchdowns in a season. So that the 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 chances are there. But again, when you talk about the numbers that I'm talking about and the things that I've argued, it's still an accurate discussion where you say, hey, 24 touchdown passes over a 16 over 16 games isn't as impressive as some of the other things we've seen from MVP years. So. You can argue to death. You can say, hey, the intangibles are there. His impact on the game, his impact on defenses, the way he controls the game. No question about it. That's not ever in question. Lamar Jackson is one of the greatest players in this game and one of the most unique players in the history of this game. But again, Mitchell, the the, the numbers are yeah. what the numbers are. Well, you know, the next follow-up question that's going to come is, if it's not him, then who? And, and everyone else's mind immediately goes to the quarterback position. You know, oh, you know, Mahomes. Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, you know, et cetera, haven't been put on MVP seasons either. We're forgetting all the other skill position, non-quarterback players. I mean, Tyreek, CMC, et cetera. I think Barry Sanders summed it up best in a tweet he had recently when he was a co-MVP years back. He's like, this is the year that CMC wins a co-MVP with insert quarterback here. Because it's always about the quarterback. It always will forever be about the quarterback. And Richard, at some point in time, like you said a hundred times, they're going to have to do their best quarterback and their best non-quarterback because this, I don't know. I don't know how you don't give it to Lamar, but at the same time, it's just becoming a quarterback-only award, and it's kind of unfair. <laughs> 